Oh, hi, I'm the heretic, and the political spectrum is freaking worthless! I made a video on this topic several months back, but my audience has grown since then, and I thought it'd be worth it to reiterate my opinion. So I'm going to assume that you're familiar with the concept of a political spectrum, modeling individuals' political opinions between two extremes in relation to each other. The purpose of a model is to clarify, to take something that makes no sense so that it makes sense. Yay! Like Mendelian genetics or the heliocentric model of the solar system, a model only has as much value as its accuracy. You don't see many alchemists trying to turn lead into gold for a reason. So what makes a political spectrum a bad model? You probably have an idea of what it looks like, but spoiler alert, you don't. Everybody thinks they know what it looks like, but nobody is going to agree with them. If you ask 10 people what the political spectrum looks like, you'll get 11 different answers. Is it collectivism versus individualism? Nationalism versus globalism? Republican versus Democrat? Radicalism versus tenderness? And no, I am not making that last one up. Nobody knows. Just look online for political spectrum and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. There's no clear political spectrum that anyone can agree to. And most of the times, this spectrum makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. Here's an example. Adolf Hitler, nationalist, socialist, militarist. George W. Bush, globalist, neoconservative, militarist. Ron Paul, individualist, minarchist, non-militarist. Whatever your opinion on them, all these people are popularly considered to be right-wing. This is the confusion the political spectrum generates. Three people with wildly disparate and often diametrically opposing ideas can be lumped into the same category somehow. The political spectrum creates similarities from opposites. And I can't see how this would cause any problems at all. Recall how these online quizzes place ideas on a spectrum. If you have enough points, you're on the left or on the right. And you gain points by answering these questions. Two people who only agree on one issue out of 100 may very well show up on the same place of a political spectrum. People have attempted to reconcile these clear inconsistencies by inventing things like the political circle or horseshoe theory. The idea is that the further you go towards vaguely defined extreme, the more closely these ideas resemble each other, which makes sense. After all, doesn't Antifa resemble the bigotry and thuggishness they're supposedly fighting to prevent? But we haven't answered our core problem. What are these extremes? If the political spectrum is a circle, then we've introduced the up and down axis. What does up and down mean? Your model hasn't clarified anything. All you've done is add another axis for us to be confused over. Great work, political scientists. No, really. You guys are utter morons. The problem of up and down applies to your political squares and triangles too. Oh, but there are attributes consistent with left or right ideologies. If so, then these ideas must be exclusive to that wing of the political spectrum. But the problem is, they aren't. Is the right just nostalgic? If so, then liberal Keynesian economist Paul Krugman must be a rightist for being nostalgic for 1950s taxation. Is the left anti-war? Someone needs to tell the imperialist Soviet Union or U.S. Presidents Woodrow Wilson, Franklin D. Roosevelt, Harry Truman, and Lyndon Johnson weren't being proper leftists for leading the U.S. into war during their terms. So there's no clear core of what leftism or rightism is, and anything you come up with takes only two seconds before it's contradicted. But it must have utility, right? Otherwise, why would people use it? Well, it's tribalism. People adopt an idea and form their identity around it. They create post-facto justifications and defenses for their in-group, adopting their ideas and arguing for them as though they were their own. And why not? Don't you want to be part of a group that has all the answers to society's biggest questions? Joining a group is way easier than figuring out these principles for yourself and aligning with the most fitting philosophy. In a way, it's a form of intellectual laziness. But it gets even worse. When everything is divided into left and right, then there is an implied right side and a wrong side. The noble, virtuous, and enlightened master race who can do no wrong against those disgusting, dirty degenerates who have nothing but the worst intentions. Other wing, little more than an enemy to feel superior to, even if membership in that wing tells us nothing about what they actually believe or want. And you know this is being exploited. Just 
look on the news and see how often a media article uses the term right wing or left wing on the headline. They do this because they're signaling to their readers that this person or what is being discussed is or is not on their team and therefore it's good or bad. So can we take people seriously when they say that Adolf Hitler and the Nazis were right wing? Hell no. They don't even know what right wing even means. I mean, I don't know either, but at least I acknowledge it. Come on, political scientists. I know you're playing Nazi hot potato with your political opponents to create guilt by association for whoever you disagree with. Just admit that the Nazis were the National Socialist German Workers Party. I promise you'll feel better. Why drive people against each other? Who does it benefit? These guys. This binary prevents us from finding alternate solutions to our problems, narrowing solutions to a left solution or a right solution, and serves to direct our legitimate outrage towards our fellow man and away from the actual cause of our problems. After all, it's those darn Republicans who voted for the war in Iraq, or those evil Democrats who voted for Obamacare. Because of the left-right paradigm, we're forced into blaming each other, directing our outrage horizontally rather than vertically, which is where it should go. I reject this. I don't want to be pitted against my fellow victim of democracy. It's time we cast aside these outdated, meaningless terms and focus on what really matters. Ideas. Ideas like that what percentage of your property you get to keep is not up for a vote. Ideas like the initiation of force cannot be justified. Ideas like freedom! Don't accept the premises of these people you know are lying to you. Don't let them box your thinking in terms of left or right. If they insist on lying to you, then insist on not giving them the time of day. Life's too short to be manipulated. Socialists are still going to socialist, no matter where they are on the blueberry kumquat axis. Where am I on such a graph? I don't care! I can't tell you how often my own discussions devolved into asserting my own definitions of a political spectrum. All it does is make things more complicated. Language matters. Definitions matter. Because if we're communicating, we have to be able to agree on what the words we're using mean. At least that way, you know what the heck I'm talking about. Questions, comments, critique? What did your political spectrum look like? Is horseshoe theory still valid in the Nietzschean sense of he who fights monsters should see to it that he himself does not become a monster? Like, share, and subscribe to become a heretic today.